In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Very faithful, we have this year quite a nice situation whereby we have four full weeks. It's not often the case in Advent. Sometimes it's three weeks. Sometimes it's three weeks in a few days. This year we have a, a really long, well, really the longest you can have season of Advent before Christmas. And as you know, it's it's always a, a very suitable time or they're the, the necessary time to uh, prepare ourselves. It's the time of preparing for the coming of our Lord in the Nativity, but also just the coming of our Lord in grace into our souls. We can, we can always do a little reflection and say, well, in the past years, some of us, many of us, maybe, maybe all of us, we have been sleeping. We have not use this time well. We've been lazy or more commonly, more often, we are pulled into this fever, this feverish uh, attitude of the world that it's all about buying things or getting things or material things. Uh, it's so far away from the true preparation of Christmas. We can easily get uh, pulled into that world where all we think about is material things, which is, of course, the very opposite of the whole truth of Christmas. So let us think now we have these four weeks. Let us use the time wisely, as we read in scriptures, redeeming the time, this time we will not get back. Let's take advantage of it. Let us Follow those classic principles that have saved so many souls, that have brought so many saints into heaven. This classic, let's say, Catholic principle enshrined by St. Benedict, amongst others, of ora et labora. Many of you like to wear the, the, the very highly indulgenced uh, medal of St. Benedict. It's a wonderful sacramental, one of the most powerful. But let us also remember St. Benedict brought so many thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of monks and nuns and even faithful into heaven through this principle, ora et labora. Ora et labora just means pray and work. So if we think of our time of Advent as an ora et labora, what about my prayer? What about my work? Let us think about that now during this uh, sermon. Firstly, ora. Let's talk about this idea of prayer. It's not just simply vocal prayers. First of all, we have to have the right uh, frame of mind for prayer. We have to be, be thinking about the right things in prayer. It's not simply repeating prayers, which is good, but it is what are we thinking about? What do we think about in this time of Advent? From the very beginning of time, since Adam and Eve, let's say, Mankind has been in need of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we think of a world in which there is no Messiah, there is no Redeemer? What happened after Adam and Eve fell into original sin? How much do we need a Redeemer? Let's look and see what happened. Within a few generations, little things happening throughout uh, those first generations. Very quickly, they fell into sin, and over time, they lost, or corrupted, I would say, they corrupted their uh, revelation, the, the truth that God gave to Adam and Eve that were being passed down because their souls were in grave sin of the original sin. They began to make false gods. They began to fall into terrible vices. They began to worship beasts or statues. Images of wood and metal and stone, they begin to come up with all of these, what we would call now pagan ceremonies around these false gods. They would make into gods animals, statues, things of nature, even other men. And not only that, but these gods that, that people made, or they still make now, they're not even virtuous gods or, or holy gods or omnipotent gods. They are gods that are just like any other human being with original sin, they have all these vices and they make all these foolish mistakes and they, 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 they are terrible people, or even if they're animals, even worse. 
Or there are gods that are gods only of fear. You look into pagan civilizations, the gods have nothing to do with mercy or with the, the love of souls. And this is all before the time of our Lord. This is all mankind and original sin. And it wasn't much better even in the Jews, amongst the, the chosen people, that God showered so many graces upon them. They began to fall into errors. Their divine worship in the temple was true for its time, but their practice of, their, of the faith began to fall into a formalism where they just... Everything was about the action itself and nothing about the inside. Our Lord says, you are whitened sepulchers. You're like, you're like a beautiful whitened paint, painted uh, grave, but inside it's just empty with some dry bones. Our Lord is very clear. The, even amongst the Jews, the, the, the belief in the Messiah, the practice of their faith had been corrupted. How much did the world need the Messiah? How much did people desire it? How much would be we be without, what would we be without the coming of the Messiah? But God had promised, had promised a Redeemer. He says to our first parents, I will put enmity between you and the woman and thy seed and her seed. She shall crush your head, you shall lie in wait for her heel. God promises the coming of uh, the, the seed of the woman the child of this great woman, of course, Our Lady and Our Lord Jesus Christ. And frequently our Lord, uh, God himself, repeated the promise to the different prophets. He says to prophet Isaiah, Say to the faint-hearted, take courage and fear not. Behold, God will come, he will save you. So this promise to tell the, the, the chosen people, even the, even the Gentiles knew these prophecies. A Messiah is coming. A great king is coming. Someone who will bring peace to the world. Who will bring salvation to the world. It's this great longing, this great desire. This is what we think of in Advent. This is why you have also later in Sundays, different Sundays, you have St. John the Baptist coming into the gospel. This reminder that the world is waiting. The world cannot survive without our Lord. The more the world goes away from our Lord, the more it descends into chaos and sin and hatred and vicious things. It's the same true as now. The more people, individuals, families, nations, the more they run, run away from or reject our Lord Jesus Christ, the more they fall into the greatest errors and the greatest of sins. So you can understand this time of Advent, we should be thinking already. How much do we desire our Lord? Our Lord has already come. We, we no longer are preparing for the, the coming of our Lord on this earth like he did at, at Christmas, at the first Christmas. But all that is useless if we have, not, uh, we have not asked our Lord and prepared for our Lord to live and to dwell in our souls. We, we are looking at this, what we would call a spiritual, a very real spiritual coming of our Lord. It will profit us nothing if he is not the king of our hearts and souls. Yes, he has already come. This is true. But then there is this continuous presence of our Lord, the living of our Lord through sanctifying grace in our souls. If that's not there, then his first advent, his first coming, what's the purpose of that for us? If we do not embrace it, we do not desire it. We do not accept it. We do not desire it to always continue. This is the, the Advent that we are preparing for now. It's the, the very important one for us. If, if we thought of our Lord coming at Christmas, we would be getting hundreds of thousands of dollars he would bring us. We would be preparing. We were like, I got four weeks, and then I'm going to be, you know, millions of dollars are coming to me. We would be absolutely working our tails off to get ready for that coming of our Lord. Or he says, I'm going to give you all the good material things or all the pleasures you've ever desired. I'm going to give you magnificent beauty and clothing, everything you could ever desire on this earth I will bring at Christmas. Well, of course, people would be working very hard for these four weeks. Unfortunately, the, the reality is we do not understand 
how much more valuable our Lord brings the supernatural goods, the spiritual goods that are infinitely more valuable. One single moment of sanctifying grace is more valuable than everything on this earth. But we are very materialistic. We think only of the physical things. And therefore we are foolish. We are fools. Let us try to correct that mistake in this time of Advent. So we speak of this. How do we, we know what we need to do during Advent. Well, sorry, we know what we should do. How do we go about doing it? How do we prepare our souls? This is the aura and labora. Prayer, penance, work. Okay, these are all part types of prayer. Prayer is a type of work. Prayer is prayer. It's aura, but it's also a spiritual work. That's why most people, most people find prayer difficult. Real prayer, not just throwing out a few uh, short prayers, but actual real mental prayer is hard work. It's the hardest work. It is aura et labora. So what should we do? During this time of Advent, let's cover a few basic things. We, we know that historically, at least in principle, it was a time of penance. Unfortunately, you probably know better than I, there are no real required penances during, penance, during Advent right now. At this current state in the year 2022, there's not really much that's required officially. That doesn't mean that we do not make efforts and try to do penance. Uh, God has always uh, required penance. He's often exhorted and encouraged all to do penance in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. St. John the Baptist was preaching penance. Do penance for the kingdom of God is at hand. And then our Lord comes and says, unless you do penance, you shall likewise perish. Holy Mother of the Church says penance is good during Lent, wearing the, the violet which is a, always a symbol of, uh, of penance. The, the church says we don't make big celebrations of marriages during Advent. It's a time of penance. We do not use flowers in the, on the altar. It's a time of penance. We only use the organ if necessary. We don't use it as a, an extra thing, only as the bare minimum. The, church, the Holy Mother Church says do penance during this time of Advent. We are all sinners. We all have offended God. Penance is necessary. Firstly, we would say cleansing our, examining our conscience and making a good confession. You have four weeks to, to prepare yourselves to make a good confession. Especially those if, who might be in, living in sin. We want to receive the sacrament of penance, a good confession. It's the only solution to that miserable state. Not only the, the reception of a good confession, but also the preparation and the receiving of the Holy Eucharist, of course. But then we go into this question, there's penance. But then we often, we pre-say and often we say in the confessional, how is your mortifications doing? And I know that I've spoken here several times about it. And every time I say it, people say, what is this mortification? There are interior, there are exterior. There are two types of mortification. Mortification is this, this dying to yourself. That's what the word means. Making dead. Mort, mors facere. Mortis facere. To make dead. To kill. You're killing those disordered passions. The, the pride of your mind. You're killing the, so you're killing your, you're reducing the, the, the chaos of your passions. It means many things, but it's all about this idea that you are bringing your, your soul and your body into control. You are making your soul and your body directed towards God and not towards sin. This is mortification. You do that by uh, these certain voluntary things. So, for example, the, the interior for your soul, you deny your passions at times. You don't say, well, it's because my passions want it, I do it. Because I want to eat, now I eat. Because I, I want to think about these bad things, I think about these. Because I want to say these, these terrible things, I say them. No, no, you say, no, no, I control those. I deny those. 
my disordered inclinations. Maybe my vanity easily gets out of hand. Someone says, oh, I don't really like what you look today. Oh, it's the end of the world. No, no, we say, listen, that's okay. Someone can think I look bad, that's fine. Maybe I do look bad. Or my pride, someone doesn't give me enough attention. I want more attention. My pride and my ego. I did something good and they didn't compliment me. They didn't thank me. My pride is offended. That needs to be curbed and mortified. My worldly mindedness, I'm always thinking about success or money or material things or getting more of this and more of this and more of this. Mortification says, no, no, no. You need to give that up. You need to stop running after this thing. During the time of Advent, I'm going to push it out of my mind. I'm not going to worry about that thing. Or it could be anger. I'm too easily thrown into anger or self-love. These are interior things that we need to mortify. And then there's the external ones, what we think more obvious. The exterior mortifications, reducing some of your meals, your, your getting rid of snacking, getting rid of maybe you enjoy this, uh, I don't know, coffee, tea, or some, or juice, or something. You get rid of something and you just have water instead of all these other nice drinks. Or maybe you, you reduce or remove visual entertainments. You stop watching things on the days of Advent. You, 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 you don't make those extra phone calls and, and gossiping or the talking of just, you feel, you feel like you gotta give everyone the news all the time. You stop sending messages. Please, God, stop sending messages. The world will continue to exist if you don't say good morning to someone on a, on a, on a, on a telegram or WhatsApp. Goodness gracious. That's a good, a good thing for, for Advent. You know, just be silent. Just shut up. And let God's silence help you correct your soul. This is a good external mortification. More silence. Maybe it's stop thinking of the, the, during the month of December until Christmas. Stop thinking about worldly entertainments. Don't think that you need to go out and do some worldly thing. So you know what? I'm going to give that up during Advent. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small thing. This is an exterior mortification that helps bring your body and soul under control and order towards God. But Advent is not only a time of penance, it's a time of prayer. And there's no such thing as prayer without penance and penance without prayer. They, they always go together. You'll never find a saint that does one but not the other. They always go together. Prayer helps you to do penance and penance helps you keep your prayer life. You see that with St. Paul, you see the Mary Magdalene, you see some of the great uh, penitents, penitential saints have always been this way. Say your prayers well. Maybe don't say as many, in the sense, you know, you don't think you have to do three hours, but those 30 minutes you do, make them count, make them valuable. It's always a good thing to have the Angelus three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, because Angelus especially, we are... We are thinking of this mystery of Advent, the mystery of the incarnation of our Lord, and that's what the Angelus is all about. The Angelus is about, really, the, the, the incarnation and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take, take some time to do some spiritual reading. So these are just a few examples of the good things we can do to spend this time wisely, that Advent is trying to prepare to receive and to keep our Lord in our soul. This is the gift we want to give our Lord, that our soul be as prepared as possible, that it be filled with the, the, the maximum amount of love for a God that is possible. Nothing else really matters at Christmas. Nothing else really makes a difference. Let us think of this and use these good exercises, receive holy, con holy confession, Penance, receive it well. Holy Communion, receive it well. Work on those mortifications. Work on that good prayer life. If we sanctify our Advent in this way, it will become a time of grace, a time of salvation for our souls. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.